The scripture lesson is Jeremiah uh, 29, chapter 1, verses 4 to 7. The reading's on page 731 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles who I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was in my first appointment, I met a friend who is now a colleague. And he introduced me to the game of racquetball. I loved racquetball. And I got to tell you, in those early years, my my dream was to be able to beat Jim. And I finally did. I played racquetball up until about maybe 15 to 20 years ago. And I realized that this body couldn't take it anymore. But I want to go back to those days. I want to go back to playing racquetball. I want to go back to playing at the Frederick Court Club. We'd play for two hours, and then we would go and sit in the sun, and we used to laugh and say, you know, See those little drops of water going down the drain? One of, the days, one of these days, that drop of water is going to be one of us. i just love to go back. This year at annual conference, I uh, experienced something I had not experienced before. You see, every year at annual conference, my brother Al and I would sit together. And we would comment from time to time about some of the stuff that was being said, some of the reports that were being given. This year was different because as many of you know, Al died in March. So we didn't get a chance to share. I'd love to go back to those days. I've told you before about how Dad and I would ride around on Christmas Eve taking presents to the aunts and the uncles and the cousins. Every year around Christmas I think of that and I miss it. And I'd love to go back to it. You see, the reality is that we oftentimes want to go back to the good old days. Even when the good old days weren't so good, we still want to go back. You ever notice, I was reminded of this at 9.30, we don't remember the bad part of the good old days. We only remember the good part. The children of Judah are in exile, or at least some of them are. They've been sent off to Babylon. And if you remember the scripture from two weeks ago, they struggled with that. They said, by the waters of Babylon, by those canals, those rivers that we work in as slave labor, we sit down and we weep when we remember Zion. Their captors torment them. Why don't you sing us some of those songs you used to sing in Zion? They say, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Their pain and their sadness and their, their grief, their sense of loss is so great 
that they even find themselves wishing the same pain on their enemies. A wish that's described most vividly in that last verse of the 137th Psalm. Blessed are those who take the enemy's children and dash them against the rocks. Sometimes you just want to go back. You want to go back to what it once was. The truth is we can't go back. I can't go back to an annual conference session without being there beside me. I can't go back to taking those presents around to my aunts and uncles with Dad. Not only because Dad died 26 years ago, but my aunts and uncles have died too. And even if they were alive, the houses we would go to, they're not there anymore, or at least they're not there with my aunts and uncles in them. As much as I'm tempted at times, I can't go back to playing racquetball. I'd sure like to try, but I've been warned that if I hurt my knee again and I have to have it replaced, I'm going to rehab instead of coming home after the surgery. So I won't tell you who told me that, but um, it's a word that I've heard. You see, we can't go back. The children of Israel in their anguish, the children of Judah in their anguish, find themselves looking back. It doesn't help that there are prophets in the land. There are prophets in the land that are saying, the word of the Lord has come to me, and the Lord has told me that within two years the exiles will return home. Imagine you're one of the people in Jerusalem and you hear that prophecy. The Lord has told me within two years you will return home. And then you hear the words of Jeremiah. Settle in the land where you're living. Plant crops, grow gardens so you can enjoy the food. Marry, build houses. Give your children in marriage. Now, which of those two messages do you want to hear? Which of those two messages are you going to connect with? The one that says the exiles are coming home within two years, or the one that says be content where you are? Let's be honest, folks. Most of us want the exiles to come home, don't we? We want life to get back to what it was just a few years before. That's the dream. That's the hope. You see, sometimes we listen for the message we want to hear rather than listening for the message we need to hear. About 25, 30 years ago now, my dad was having surgery. It was suspected that he had prostate cancer. He had surgery and the doctor came out to us after the surgery and said, I've seen this a thousand times. I'm 99% sure this is malignant. So here's what we're going to do. Here are the treatments that he's going to be receiving. We have to, of course, wait for the biopsy report to come back, but that should be back in five days. Then we'll set up an appointment and we'll get to work on treating this this situation. Five days later, the biopsy report came back, and guess what? It was benign. And the Clip family did the happy dance. That's the best I could dance, folks. We did the happy dance. We were excited. And over the next year and a half, we watched as Dad just continued to decline. But we were happy because, hey, he was cancer-free. Until one day he fell down the cellar steps. And we discovered that there was blood in his urine. And they began testing again. The test even more elaborate. And the doctor told us, he has prostate cancer. 
and it's all through his body. It's into the bones. We want to sit down and meet with the family. We got the answer we wanted to hear 18 months earlier, but it wasn't the answer we needed to hear. Too many times we settle for what we want rather than what we need. That's what the children of Judah were doing. They were settling for what they wanted to hear. The exiles are coming home rather than settling and needing to hear the message of settle into the land where you're living. Jeremiah goes one step further, though. He doesn't just tell them to settle into the land where they are living. He tells them to pray. Not for Jerusalem but for Baghdad. To pray for the land where you're living. Pray for its welfare because its welfare is your welfare as well. Times have changed since Jeremiah was writing. It's been 25, 2600 years. We live in a world today that is far more connected. We know what's going on around the world in an instant, thanks to the internet. We are truly part of a world community. I am convinced that if Jeremiah were here today, he would be telling us, pray for the world in which you live. Pray for the inhabitants of that world. Pray for your enemies, Jesus said. Not just the enemies who live next door, but the enemies who live across the seas. You know, I, um, I, I'm going to let you in a little secret. Many of you may not know this. I'm a sports fan. Um, for those of you who are new, everybody knows that in the church. I mean, I like the Orioles, I like the Ravens, I own that. And I love to go to the ball games. I know when I go to a Ravens game, I want to get there early because about 15 minutes before the game begins, there is this, this opportunity to stand up and I don't know the name of the song, but I know the first verse, I'm proud to be an American. And, and you have people just standing and cheering, and it is a real feel-good moment. I, I got to tell you, I get goosebumps every time I go to the game and that happens. You go to see the Orioles or the Ironbirds or any team, and if it's a weekend, you know you're going to get to stand and sing God Bless America or This Land is Your Land. And it feels good. I mean, I, when I think about the song, God Bless America, my wife has, has informed me of the part of the story behind it, and when I hear that opening verse, as the storm clouds gather far across the sea, I, I'm reminded of what it must have been like for those who lived prior to and during World War II to be able to sing that song knowing all that was going on in Europe and in Asia. But i got to tell you, folks, I've been thinking a lot this week about what songs we need to be singing. And I'm not so sure we need to be singing God Bless America as much as we need to be singing God Bless Syria a nation that's torn apart by war, people whose homes have been ravaged for so long now. Or maybe we need to be singing God Bless Haiti because I look at Haiti and I think of a land that was ravaged by an earthquake about six years ago. 
And then just a couple weeks ago was ravaged by a hurricane that wiped away the tents that many people called home. You see, I think if Jeremiah were here today, he'd be telling us to pray for the world in which we live. And if Jesus were here, he would be reminding us not just to pray for the world, but to pray for our enemies, to pray for those who seek to do us harm. Which means Jesus would be reminding us to pray for ISIS and Al-Qaeda, Russia, China. Those nations that we look to as enemies. You see, Jeremiah was reminding his people to not keep looking back, but to look ahead. To live in the world that you're in right now. The exile said it's hard to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. But if, if they would be able to say, Babylon is is my land, they would be singing the Lord's song in their land, which is so much easier. Folks, we can hold on to the past all we want, but the reality is we live in the present. And from the present, we move into the future. Our life is ahead of us. We should hear the words of Jeremiah over and over and over again. 